Well hello everybody and we're on an adventure and this one is an adventure a little bit different so let me explain last night or yesterday about two o'clock I decided I was going to travel seven hours to Glencoe because the weather looked spectacular We'd got snow covered mountains, clear blue sky the next morning, loads of frost. And what I wanted to do was go and I cut one of the, the mountains or one of the hills and get some panoramic shots, etc. as that nice light comes up first thing in the morning. So I set off at half past two. I blew up there everything going great I get just past Lot Lomond and I break down <laughs> and this is now 12 o'clock at night so I've traveled from half past two till 12 o'clock um, expected to get it my location at Glencoe at about 20 to 1 and everything was going absolutely bang on broke down First of all, I thought it was some sort of head gasket problem. I now think it's a fuel issue. So I ring the RAC. The RAC, the, they have been good considering the location, but <laughs> um, because I am about 360 miles away from home, because they have different companies doing their the recovery, the first company have dropped me off at the services just the south side of Glasgow. That was at 10 o'clock this morning. It's now 10 to 1. <laughs> no further forward with getting another recovery truck to come. They are also planning to send a mechanic out to see if it's repairable because first of all like I say it was it was potentially a gasket can't do it um, they have offered me an hire car with me to leave the vehicle here and they collect it at some point and bring it home within five days no way am I leaving this here that's the situation I'm in this is the adventure I don't think there's going to be many images on this adventure. It's going to be long, it's going to be torturous, but I'm going to stick it out, I'm going to have a big smile on my face, touch wood, and I'm going to try and enjoy it. Okay, um, the services are not the best services. They're only a small one. Um, other issues I've got is, because I can't start the engine, that isn't charging my leisure battery. So, but luckily the sun's out at the moment and that's charging the solar power and I've actually got a good charge at the moment. Diesel later on, just had a message from RAC. Let's have a look what they say. RAC, so they're saying at the moment, that I must admit they do give good updates. Sorry if you're still waiting, we are very busy, but one of our trusted partners will be with you as soon as possible. So yes, um, this has already gone into a 13 hour recovery <laughs> mission. And uh, I am, at the moment, I'm 300 miles from home. I've got the iPad, I've downloaded some films. Um, I can charge that up. I've got loads of food. My biggest concern is keeping warm got the diesel later on as long as i can keep that going by the leisure battery being charged everything will be good i'm happy i can go in the services um, and obviously get a warm as well i'm not sure if they're 24 hour i bet they are but it's only a very small services so hopefully um, at some point today they've told me it could potentially take two days to get home yeah that's the situation with it at the minute. So I'm still in Scotland at the minute <laughs> on a Scottish adventure. Woo! Let's see how good the RAC turn out to be. Um, 
I know it's very difficult for them, but hey, that's what you pay the money for, I suppose. Um, but I'm going to persist. I'm going to persist and see how I get on. <laughs> okay, catch it a bit. Update. Uh, okay, so had one of the uh, the mechanics come out. He's took everything off and done. Sussed out what it is. Um, turbo's gone. So we're still back to. I'm now back to sort of square one, as in I've got to wait for a transporter. I've just had the text message now as he's pulled off saying. I've got to wait, it should be with us within the next 270 minutes, four and a half hours. <laughs> so I've got at least another four and a half hours before I get to the next stage of this experience. <laughs> Still in the same position, it's now, I was here at 10 o'clock this morning, it's now 20 past four. Um, potentially not moving here until around seven o'clock, because they're saying it's four and a half hours wait time at least um, so that's an absolute gutter hello and good morning everybody now apologize for the noise that's the engine running <laughs> um, and the reason why the engine's running is because I'm gonna have to charge it up I'm gonna have to charge the ledger battery up woke up this morning, I've had the heating on for a, a good while and the battery was the lowest it's ever been. This this panel here is actually the solar panel but it tells you how much charge is in the leisure battery. Um, as soon as I put the split charger, as soon as I've charged, as soon as I've started the engine, the engine charges the battery um, and it's already gone up to 14, it was on 11.4 which is flat even though everything was still running, so it must have been running just. <coughs> so I thought I'm going to start the engine. It's only 5 to 7 in the morning, it's a little bit noisy, but there's hardly anybody around me, so I'm not too worried. Well, there's no one around me. There's one van here. I think people are sleeping in here. It's been here too, Dave. Okay, so update on um, what situation is. The situation is, I'm still. Scotland, this is 30 hours after I broke down. Um, still in that second location, which is it's, um, just hold on. I'm at Bothwell Services M74 south of Glasgow. But I've got some good news after. Um, no news at 9 o'clock last night, half past 9, um, putting them under pressure a fair bit, uh, even though they've all been really polite, really nice, but with no action, so um, things needed to be sorted. Anyway, in the end, they've managed to get me um, a recovery, hopefully for about, I think I'm sure they said around 10, 11 o'clock this morning. The guy's coming from Birmingham, so he'll, he'll come and collect me and he'll take me all the way home, which is fantastic. If I'd have known that at 8 o'clock this morning, I wouldn't have had a problem. At uh, 8 o'clock yesterday morning, I wouldn't have had a problem as long as I knew. Uh, but it's took till well, nearly 10 o'clock last night before I get a phone call safe. Right, we've got someone. Okay, um, yeah, that is a photographer's van life experience breaking down in Glencoe but all is not lost because I've got a plan and I had a plan yesterday afternoon but to be honest with you my mind wasn't at it and I couldn't be bothered but I'm gonna try and get an image I'm gonna definitely try and get an image because I feel I've been asleep for ages, absolutely. I've been asleep sort of on and off since about seven o'clock yesterday. <laughs> so um, I've had a good sleep, I've had a real good sleep. Uh, right, first thing to do, let's switch this engine off because it's noisy. Okay, 
that's, that will drop down quite dramatically to be honest. Uh, I have got solar panels on but it's within winter time. We did have some sun yesterday but that 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 heat has been going constantly so it needs a little bit of backup. Yeah it's, dro it's dropping down quite dramatic but we'll be alright, we'll be alright now. I can always do it again uh, in a short while and I don't need a lot of power now. Quite comfortable heat wise. What I done last night was started to ring round, um, start to ring round and see if there's any uh, garages that may be able to fit me a new turbo today. Um, unfortunately, didn't have that idea till six o'clock gone last night, so I couldn't. I got in touch with one person who gave me another number and to try them. They didn't answer, so that was back up this morning. I was going to do that about nine o'clock this morning, ring around and see if anybody could repair it so I could get home on my own. That was another option. Another option was to actually ring a recovery um, service around this area and see if we can get someone that would move me on at least. And then I was going to ring the RAC and say, Hey, I've got someone, this is the number, you ring them, sort it out. Give it to the RAC. They did offer me, I had two options last night, I could have slept in um, with an hotel, apparently there's one just around the corner somewhere, I chose to sleep in the van because I've got a lot of gear in here and I didn't want to cart it from one to the other and um, security reasons and I wanted to look after the van to be honest. They also offered me an hire car a couple of times which I totally refused, reason is they could not guarantee the safety of this vehicle. So, I said, there's no way I'm leaving this here if you're not guarantee it, if you're not responsible for this vehicle, if anything happens to it. Right. So, I car, not an option at all. And that's where we're at this morning. Um, so, got up, like I say, fresh head. I'm still, I'm still tired, I must admit. I still feel tired, still feel drained. <laughs> I feel like I've walked up a mountain, even though I haven't walked up a mountain, but it's been one of the biggest challenges I've had in photography. <laughs> I, I feel like I've... Um, Tom Hanks in that film, uh, t was it Terminal? Where he's trapped in the in the terminal. I'm, I'm trapped at the, uh, at the services. <laughs> Um, okay, and, and as I'm just trapped, I'm, I'm literally just trapped. If if worse comes to the worst, I'd have had to have sorted it out Monday and tried to get someone to repair my vehicle. That's another another well two days. Um, it's now what day is it? It's Saturday. I started out Thursday. Um, <laughs> it's Saturday today. Uh, Saturday morning. It is five to seven okay so I've got a plan photography wise not sure if it's it's even gonna be worth it but I'm definitely gonna get out there with my camera and I'm gonna go in about give about half an hour or so maybe a little bit longer now we've had super hard frost over the last couple of days snow up in the mountains that's what I was going to Scotland for um, but today it's on the change and with it we've expected um, warmer weather drizzle a rain belt come through the only thing without rain belt is it might actually I'd assume potentially snow first that's what normally happens snow to rain <laughs> please don't let me get stuck in snow a bit disaster. Um, I would say the only time I wouldn't want snow is today. Please. Yeah, uh, what else? So, yeah, I'm having breakfast. I'm going to have a good um, prep up, get the van tidied a little bit more, get things tidied, do a bit of work, and then I'm going to get the camera gear out, and then I'll see you guys shortly. So I'm just uh, prepping up for my shoot, um, don't need a lot, this is, uh, I'll just go over some of my kit with you while I was getting it out, so 
I've got the GoPro 7, which I haven't used for a long time. And what replaced it was the Action, the Osmo Action. For vlogging, Osmo Action every time. This is better, the only thing this is better for, the only thing, is the inbuilt sound is slightly better with the muffle on than this. That's the only thing. External sound, absolutely nightmare. It, it makes the camera crash. I've got the proper thing for it. Um, you have to have an adapter, it costs a fortune. The adapter makes clashes with the camera. You get super loads of problem with a GoPro. So that is just a bit of B-roll backup action stuff. Very rarely use it, to be honest with you. Um, that is a cracking little vlogging camera. Um, would, would use it more, but I bought a. I've got another vlogging camera now, which you're on, which is the Sony I don't know, VZE10 or something like. That. Um, just to give that more professional effect. But this this does the job. Um, so in wet, extreme weather, wet weather, things like this. I would go for this. I have to buy the little adapter, which costs, I don't know, 20 quid or whatever it was, and then I can plug my mics in from there. I've got my Rode mics, which I'm I'm using by, I've, I've got two sets of these as backup, sort of a backup charge if I'm out for a long day. And then back up of the backup is um, the Rode, uh, boom mic that seems to break up in in uh, windy weather but it really it's a backup because I don't need any batteries for it so that's the backup mics which I always carry um, the the problem with these these mics are oh, I'll show you Pull that down. <coughs> the problem with these mics and it is the only problem the, this is the Rode uh, Wireless Go 1, the first one. The, the wind muff clips on there and it just falls straight off. So I don't use it. But what I do do sometimes, which I've been using, I've got this muff, this muff here, and what I do is I can shove it in there it's a little bit awkward but well not that awkward but i use a bigger wind muff and i use it like that and then i can clip that on direct i do prefer the lab mic um, for another reason is is i've clipped it on there before knocked it off and nearly lost it twice so I do, if I do it that way, I would put a lanyard around it so I wouldn't lose it. I wouldn't I'd clip it on and put a lanyard around as an extra bit of security, which I carry. Uh, and that's sort of a bit of vlogging bit, backup charger, which I'd have carried if I'm going on a good art to charge my mainly phone, really, keep it for um, safety reasons. I've got another battery bank as well. I've got two battery banks. Well, I've got for several, actually. Um, um, that's I've had that years. It's brilliant, brilliant. It's the only one that's carried on working for years. Had it probably about six, seven years now. Um, yeah, batteries always carry. <laughs> that's my battery bag. When a battery goes flat, this is where they've all charged. When they go flat, I put it in the front so I know front ones on, on that need charging when I get back to the van or get back home. Um, then. We've got, uh, obviously my camera, my main camera is my Sony a7R 3 absolutely love it. Always leave the 2470 um, lens on it, it's designed 2470 f4 and it's a brilliant lens, S light, small, brilliant. And then to complement that, I've got the 70 to 300 Sony G lens, uh, what is it, f4.5 to 5.6, 70 to 300 G OSS lens. 
I could carry that up a mountain, small, light, and it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, but really it's for, um, because of the weight. So I'm covered from 24 to 300 with two lenses, two good quality lenses. And then I've got my 14mm, uh, which I really bought for um, more Astro stuff. It's a 2.8 Samyang, brilliant lens, brilliant. The only downside to this lens is there's no um, thread on the front for, for putting any filters. But I keep meaning to get a filter. You can buy filters that go in front of the um, sensor on the camera. Um, and I'll, I keep thinking about just getting a 10 stop one just in case. So there's a couple of times I couldn't use it. Like, where was I the other week? Uh, I think Pin Mill or, or one of them places where I couldn't use that because I needed a 10 stop filter on front and I couldn't do it. So I might actually get one of them. I don't think they're particularly expensive. Um, last time I looked, they're about 60 quid. So I might get it just for that. That's my kit. Carry some some lights, some torches for the night. I've got basically three torches in here. One's my little vlogging light. It's okay. It's all right. Charges up. Does the job. Fits on the uh, top of the... It's got a shoe mount so it just fits slides on and obviously can also use it as a bit of emergency light as well so that's quite good i carry that always carry always keep my head torch in me um my bag so i don't forget it and then i got this little pen torch which i can use for vlogging or for um seeing where i'm going clip it on me 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 uh chest there and yeah, just it's an, just an inspection torch, but it's small, goes in the bag, and uh, yeah, carry that everywhere. I've got. Didn't realise I was going to do a bag review. <laughs> well, I'm glad I am. Um, I bought I bought these uh, these Osprey bags for different reasons, and I realised that in wet weather. I can use it as a cover for my camera. So that's what I do, I use it for a cover for my camera. Um, they're, not, they're not cheap, but I bought it for different reasons, for storing stuff in the van actually, and things like that. And uh, I thought, yeah, that's perfect. So that always stops in the bag. I've got a couple of towels for wiping, keeping things dry. There's a little filter there for the drone. I do carry my drone, the drone's in the back there. I've just had a new drone, the DJI Mini 3 Pro, and it is a bloody a brilliant. But that's for another day. Um, what else we got in here? I think that's pretty well it. One or two little bits and bobs, nothing worth talking about, really. Um, so that's that. I won't carry all that vlogging gear with me. I do carry... Um, always keep that in my bag normally um, and that's just my backup and like I say if it's raining or anything this is weatherproof what I'm video on is not weatherproof what I've got in the top here let's have a look filters won't carry them all the time sometimes I chuck them in and out it's just the K&F Comset ones I, I'm, I'm not they're brilliant that's got the um, I think a six stop and whatever in uh, which I bought, very rarely used, but I thought I'd buy them. Um, what we've got in here? ND8, 16, 32, so that, that's them. And then I carry the 10 stop in here, polarizer, and the adapters to, um, to go on um, to the lenses. So that's, that's my filters. Too nice, like I say, I don't carry that all the time. Don't need them hardly ever. Um, not actually use them as yet, as I can remember anyway. Oh, I didn't realize I'd got my nifty 50 in here. <laughs> got my little nifty 50. Sometimes I'll carry it, sometimes I won't. I've got a chest pouch for if I'm hiking up the, the mountains. And I, I bought that in case I wanted to put 
slip the drone in there somewhere easy where I can get the drone in and out and do a bit of b-roll and things like that so that's not actually use that then but that's the idea on your on your rucksack there especially with this this rucksack because it's not this this camera bag isn't um, it's the smaller one I've got two camera bags uh, this is the Shimano Shimano Shimodo this is the Shimodo I think it's a 35 litre adventure whatever it's called bought it second hand and um, it's brilliant this is the first one that brought a newer one out of this version which is, looks excellent martin's got one of those energy i stop in the bag um, obviously one or two little backup things some um, um, sd cards things like that I've got a little seating mat, which is, you don't even know you're carrying it. That stops in all the time. And I've just bought a couple of months ago, not used it yet, is a breathable a mac in a sack. And that will stop in there. And that's just, again, if, it, if I get caught out in the rain, I could just chuck that off. Um, super lightweight, don't even know you got it. So that might as well stop in the bag. Obviously, I will, like I say, deke it if I need to. Um, that's the idea of the smaller bag. The other bag I have got is the Shimodo uh, 70 litre, um, which again, it's an absolute beast of a bag. It's superb. But the idea of this one is, is uh, so I carry less. <laughs> But I can just take the unit out of this, if I show you. You'll see down there. So this unit, this inner unit, I can just literally lift that unit out and put it straight in my other bag. I've also got a bigger unit that will carry a, a bit more as well, that will fit the bigger bag. So, or obviously just transfer them over. Now I would use this in an hiking situation as well. Say if I was hiking up a um, going wild camping, something like that. I may use that cube. It comes with its own zipper, so it'll zip up as its own little unit. Maybe if I, if I was struggling for weight, I would just take it all out and just use a little bag just to protect it. Which I've just a little padded bag, which I've uh, which I've got. That's a little little sort of vloggy tripod, bendy legs stuff. Um, I've got the the uh, Yulanzi quick release bracket so I can just clip on there and do, that's it and I've got one on that camera as well because I can swap I can put that camera on here instantly that that does that I think I carry my got a flask um, help kit flask so I had it years got three of these um, they are brilliant. The water, the your your uh, hot water stops hot for ages, or tea, coffee, cold water. And I've also got. Hold on a second. I've also got. Um, I carry. This is my water bullet. It's a bit of merch. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, it's a stain photography <laughs> water bottle. Um, contact me if you uh, if you'd like one. <laughs> uh, they do a smaller one as well. Um, yeah, it's just a bit of bit of merch. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I actually bought that for hiking and that. To be honest, I think that's it. Okay, so like I say, my plan is is to go out and do some photography. Um, So I'm going to get it probably another 20 minutes. It's starting to light up. I want it to be at dusk, at dawn. Um, so it's a little bit lighter, uh, but there's a reason for that. Okay, I'm going to get ready, get over there, because I think if I don't get over there now, I'm going to miss my opportunity. I'll see you guys shortly.
Guys, we've got a lovely sunrise. <laughs> Which is typical, though I'm not in the mountains when it's happening, but never mind. Uh, or pre sunrise, blue hour. And I don't know whether you've guessed it yet, what I'm actually photographing. I'm sure you have. <laughs> but today, or this morning, because it's the only thing I've got to photograph, because I've been stuck here for two days in the services just here, I thought I'd do some light trails. <laughs> I haven't done this for years. It should be quite simple, but I'm hoping to get a little bit of colour in the sky as well. So what we'll do is, we'll move over the bridge a bit more, maybe get more central of the, into the, the motorway here. This is the M74. <laughs> um, hopefully I'm gonna be traveling that way home so, um, in the next four hours, I think it is. So I'm gonna kill a bit of time and do a bit of this. Okay, let's move along the bridge here and see if we can get a, the composition correct. Okay, so I'm thinking I really need to be, initially need to be in the middle of the motorway. It just makes sense to start on the middle and see how I get on. And it's just about, about picking the length of the exposure that you like. But obviously we want this traffic all constantly moving. What I'm going to do is just do a rough time from, say, this car that's coming now and see how long it takes to get under the bridge. So if I count now, 1, 2, 3, 12, 13, 14, 15. I, need, I think I need a 15 second exposure. We have got a super sunrise coming which could make it, um, <laughs> make it spectacular. The, w the way to grab that though is from the, the right hand side of the bridge. Um, what I'm thinking of doing, compositionally, it's middle of the bridge in one respect, but the, the, the road's got a slight bend to, to the left hand side. So, I think compositionally it's better going to that left hand side and getting it turning in the image. There's only a slight image and a uh, slight bend and it's further back. But that's my thought, thought process on that. But if I do that, I lose this beautiful sky. Uh, now I don't think if it, I don't think it's going to work if I put it on the right hand side. So that's the dilemma I've got. So we, I think I'm gonna try a bit of everything and see. Obviously, like I say, this, this middle composition here, I'm literally setting it in the middle. If I, if I stand here, I'm right in the middle of the motorway. Right in the middle. So let's get that shot and see how we get on. Another thing I really do like about the images, when we're getting these light trails, it's reflecting off the, off the, uh, the road because the road's slightly damp. So we're getting that nice coloured reflection of the lights as well. So that's, that's really nice, that is actually. Uh, yeah, it's working all right, I'm quite enjoying this. So this, yeah, it's a basic composition, bang straight in the middle of the motorway, drawing your line in, F16, 15 second exposure for this beautiful sunrise and then that's the image I'm capturing I don't know if you can see that particularly great on the on the back there there we go that's the image pretty standard very nice indeed like I say I love the reflections in the what we're getting in the on the road there that's fantastic absolutely fantastic I'm more central to the left-hand lane now, 
of the, the motorway just to get that sort of that bend in the road I think what I'm actually going to do is that's a little bit bright that is I'm going to drop the ISO as far down as I can so F50 which will give me a slightly darker image keep the image at F15 uh, keep the image at 15 seconds F16 sorry but it will make the image a slightly darker image just to get a bit more detail of that sky so I put the polarizer on to drop it down a stop I still don't think it's enough because we're starting to get quite bright I think I might have to put a 6 or a 10 stop on does it look nice with a polarizer on I must admit I've also dropped it down to F22 and all it is so I'm ISO 50 I'm right at the the ranges of that triangle so I get uh, the longest exposure possible so I'm F22 I'm ISO 50 which is the base setting for the ISO on this camera with the polarizer on and I'm getting a 15 second exposure which is getting some lovely lovely long light trails so I've rushed over to this side because I wanted to get this, the sun bursting through with the long exposure tried a couple of images you've just got to watch them raindrops I'm trying not to move the camera in case I've got to expose uh, blend one or two images together we've got a slight little bit of atmosphere in that background as well which is quite nice just that slight bit of it's probably road haze to be honest but saying that it is it is gently spitting a rain so I mean it's just like the odd little bit so that's giving that atmosphere but this is nice this is good it's not what I expected to photograph in Scotland we had a doubt I could have done this five minutes away from home <laughs> obviously now it's getting lighter as well these these light trails are, are getting less and less dominant in the image so it's a, it's a balancing act to be honest okay I think I think I've done here let's get back to the van and wait for that recovery so got another I don't know three hours before they come <laughs> let's get back enjoyed that have I enjoyed getting the camera out so it just shows you you don't have to go up mountains to enjoy yourself with your camera um, and learn some things as well so uh, yeah I've got a little bit chilly now so what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna head to the calf and I'm gonna get myself a nice full English breakfast because I deserve one <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Are these just the up meals you do? Is that, are these just the up meals you do? Yeah. Um, I'll put it in and a cup of tea as well, please. biggest worry I had overnight was the heater flattening the leisure battery um, so I've got my heat that's managed to keep going all night it's very close this morning to being flat I'm at voltage wise I'm at I'm, I'm actually at 12 volts so it's towards if and that's without the heater being kicked in so what I might do in a minute if you don't turn up, I'll probably get this heater. I'll start the engine, get the heater on, um, just because I'm going a little bit chilly. If not, I'll go and sit back in the cafe and probably have another cup of tea. Look what's arrived. 